Hey folks, I uh, wanted to take a couple minutes to show you some modifications that I do with the, the Z-Man jackhammer. Um, I will start off by saying that obviously this gold, I've got four of them here I just restocked, um, is my favorite color. Um, I think gold really just does a great job in terms of of mimicking a whole lot of bait fish um, that live in waters that you know that we find largemouth and smallmouth bass. But as pretty as this color is, what I'm going to do, some would think is blasphemy with a twenty dollar lure here. I'm just going to take my scissors and uh, all it skirt is gone strands left why did i just destroy a 20 dollars bait well i'm gonna get rid of these strands here i think i can make a better skirt so i'll leave those on it'll help what i'm about to do grip a little bit better so the tools that i have for um for tying i have this bobbin I forget what size thread this is. I've used size D before, but this is what 210 denier flat waxed nylon in the bobbin. Um, obviously, a pair of scissors. I have the flyhead cement little applicator. And what I have that I'm going to be working with a couple different colors. This one I think is from Lure Parts Online. That shows up backwards, but it says uh, <clears throat> gold bait fish. You got the um, item code there. Uh, that's going to be the belly portion. I like to counter shade where you have a, a dark color on top and then the gold on the bottom. And the dark color on top is called pumpkin bait fish. Again, Lure Parts Online sells these. They're the the scaled, uh, the bait fish material, the scaled ones. So, all right, we're going to start by taking our thread. I do not use a vise. Um, and I just wrap that around a couple times. And then I wrap the part with the bobbin the other way. And kind of trim this extra part. I will start with the skirt layer here and I'm pointing it it's going to go forward because as you move the bait forward it's going to kind of umbrella back so I like it pointing forward to have a, a more full you know big profile I'm aim that down so I don't get quite so much of the light from the window behind me um so I'm laying that on there like that and I just keep wrapping in the direction that I'm going. I've had a ton of success with this color right here. Um, everything eats eats a gold panfish type looking profile. Um, yeah, I had the gold in there before, but it was kind of gold and white, whereas this is more of just a a you know top to bottom pure gold that um you know the whole thing looks gold and i've done a lot of the um a lot of underwater videography and you do see some whites but gold is is really your bluegill your panfish a lot of the the darters even some of the sculpin have those those golden hues on them so, all right, so I took the other side of it and I've just kind of backed it around there. Now I'm going to take this, this darker one, which we called natural pumpkin bait fish. This is what Lure Parts Online called it. And I'm putting that on top. So I will do the same thing. I'm just wrapping it around there a couple times. And uh, I will take this end and just back it on there but i will say that you know not all the you don't always have to 
to cut it off. And I think I'm going to tie a second one and leave some of that on. I'll show you how to do that in a second one. Um, even the, the black ones that I do, um, here's a black one that I have a Palmetto Bugs as a trailer. We're going to talk about trailers here in a, in a minute, but um, I'll take the black ones in particular and I will add skirt layers to it. I'll add, you know, the, the black with blue flake, although that's green pumpkin blue flake, just to give it a fuller profile. I think when the fish is looking up at the light and they see something that's really filled out, just a larger profile because there's coming up there. Whereas if it's if it's just what's on there, it's more linear. And uh, I think a bigger profile helps. All right, we're coming back into wrapping this one up. And how we finish it is, I think they're half hitches. So I'm just, let's see if you can see that. Yeah, there, now you can see it. So it's straight, and I just twist that around. There you can see it. One twist, and I loop it onto the hook, and that's a half hitch. And I kind of hold it with my fingers here and draw that down. I do that once, for sure, try it twice. You can do it a few more times if you want. And then the part that just kind of seals it in is the applicator. And um, I'm just putting a couple dabs of that stuff on there. And that just locks all that thread into itself. So. It's fun because you can just, yeah, you can play around with lots of different colors. You order those, the skirt material, and just say, I think this is going to look good. All right, so right now the skirt layers are loops and you just, you want to free them. And I just go in there with the scissors and just cut it. And that to me, well, I think more than anything, it gives me a little bit of extra confidence because up to now, nobody's throwing that, that color um jackhammer that is a beautiful big bait fish bluegill um, we'll come back to this we're gonna put a, a a trailer on that i'm gonna show you one other way to do it i got a second one here i'm actually gonna be doing a bunch of these in preparation for a trip i'm headed headed south all right I'm going to be fishing eventually with Everett Park um, on one of the rivers down south in Georgia or Alabama. I'm going to be fishing um, with Brandon Barton. We're going to, I'm not sure what we're going to get into. I'd like to get into another tarpon. <laughs> that was fun. Um, going to be fishing with Brett Cummings. Decked out John boats. I'm gonna go see Fletch at Westbrook Supply. Um, got a couple different stops I'm doing, and the, the main the main thing I'm doing is going to the kayak bass fishing national championship. Um, setting up a tent for Torquedo. Anyhow, I've taken all the skirt material that's on there, and I left it on right, and I'm pushing it forward to just stay out of the way of the additional skirt layers that I'm going to tie on there. And I'm basically replicating the same thing that I just did on the bear. You know, the one that I stripped all the, um, the skirt material. This is going to give a little bit fuller bait fish profile, right? Just because you're adding to it and it's just making that, that umbrella and the strands that are pushed forward that are going to umbrella back a little bit more full. So I'm going to flip this this guy over. It's tricky because you're you're you got all these strands that want to jump back and get in your way. Hmm. Okay, they're pretty much out of the way. You're doing the same thing. 
you're taking skirt layer and the closed flat end you're sticking it on there and you're just wrapping it around which this one it has that white the, the natural color that's on there is, is kind of white on the bottom gold on the sides and it's got like a sort of a flat green pumpkin on top it's almost yeah it's green pumpkin it's got a little red fleck or something in it anyhow i'm adding that and man i had another one of those <laughs> the right color all right for me oh here it is found it so this is again we're going to go back to natural pumpkin bait fish which is a darker one the counter shading counter shading is dark on the back lighter color on the belly so same thing it will be a little bit tricky when i get to um to cutting the strands to just get the you know when it, when it makes a loop just getting the ones that i um that I put on and not trim so much of the other one. So double on the, that back, you just lay that on there. I don't know if I've gotten a real close shot of me doing that part. So it's just enough of that, that when you spin the thread over it, and honestly, the more the tighter you make it, the more it flares out. Um, certainly that is the case when you're, you're doing hair jigs and I got a tray over there with the, with some black bucktail that I got about half of them half made from last winter. I haven't completed them. So again, half hitch again, couple times maybe three and we're getting ready to talk about trailers because this one's about done after I'm after I trim it so I've gotten stuff from do it molds Barlow's lure parts online Jan's net craft it just all kinds of different places where you can you can source these these tools and these supplies all right so this one's gonna be real full and I'm just going in with the scissors and just letting one side of the scissors see what it can find go in there and you know if it pulls through it was one of the the original if it catches something it's one of the loops that we got to trim occasionally I miss them but that one looks good. So the difference there between the first one and the second one, sparse, that one's a little bit more filled in. And, and you hold that up to the light, you can see, you know, a more light passes through that one than this one. And when they're looking up at the sky and seeing this thing go overhead, sometimes maybe in muddy water, I'm not sure, but it's it definitely gives a... Nice big profile, big bait fish profile. That one looks really good. I like that one a lot. Okay, so trailers. Um, traditional trailer is for these that, that everyone uses is the razor shads. Okay, that I use a good one for for the the color we just tied. Um, but sometimes I use some goofy stuff. If I have a white one, I really like the Turo Cross. It's goofy, right? These big old floppy appendages. I'm gonna separate that. And it's just a whole lot of whole lot of movement. And if some days they want things flopping and going crazy all over the place, um, sometimes they you know, they want that tight little wiggle, wiggle of the razor shad, just very natural. Um, but sometimes natural doesn't, you know, isn't what they're looking for. They're looking for something obnoxious. Um, in 
dirty water, uh, in, in stained water. I love the palmetto bugs. Palmetto bugs, that creature bait with these floppy appendages, you just got to split them apart. And these ribs, you know, the I get the scent on there. I also skip them. If you can skip a, a jackhammer way up into the overhanging branches and bring it out, uh, this wide body bait skips really well. Just, you know, it also comes through, you know, it comes through branches and stuff. It, it tends not to, you know, if you have an up and down bait, it'll roll on its side and this hook will catch on laydowns. Whereas if it's, I mean, see it in that, in that way, you know, it's almost like a football head, you know, in terms of how it has that side to side and it gets to the edge and it, and you are less likely to dig that point into, um, you know, into a piece of wood. So this one's kind of been my traditional, what I've always, always liked to, um, to do is the, the smaller razor shed and not razor shed, sorry, diesel minnow. Okay. Four incher. This one's Houdini. I think that'll look good on there. I'm going to get that little guard off of there. And this one's called Golden Boy. So we'll get him going. I think I put that one Golden Boy in with all the Houdinis. I must have been out of the Golden Boy, or at least down to one left in the pack. All that gold. Oh, that's going to catch a nice, nice red fish down in Louisiana or actually Florida with, uh, with Brandon Barton. So that's a great profile for sure. Um, as is the razor shad, but if you really want to swing for the fence, go for something really big, jump up in size. I've done these. This was doing really well on the Susquehanna. It's just it's just the next size up uh, in terms of the the diesel minnow. Um, let me see if I reach down here. Oh, if you're really going for something big, though, if you're really looking for it to happen, is you go up to these. What's the size on these? This is a six inch swimmers. So. It's basically swim bait fishing um, with a jackhammer. And that's a very, <laughs> it's a very big fish thing to do. So I got one left of these, uh, this Houdini diesel minnow. That's a nice big profile. This was doing really well on the Susquehanna the other day, two days ago. Got some videos up there um, from that trip. One is about strainers, something that, can kill you basically any any uh usually a log or a log jam but anything that the water will pass right through but you and your boat will not and uh went over some paddle strokes for how to correct your um your path to avoid them and some direction on how to um how to handle them if you end up in the water and you're headed towards them uh, also did a little video with uh, with Jed Plunker on his first first year with the motor and what it's meant to him. Um, that that big fish profile. I'll probably throw that with uh, Brett Cummings on some of his electric only lakes down in Georgia on the way back, or maybe with Everett Park when we hit the river um, for some of those those big. You know, Georgia or Alabama spots, we'll see. But that's it. Wanted to share my Z-Man, Jackhammer, modifications, trailer choice, all that stuff. Hope it helps you catch some more fish. Please share the video. Subscribe, all that stuff. I'm really trying to grow it. Appreciate the, uh, the view and um, go fishing. See you.